Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lukas Ushcio, and uh, for several months already, actually it's about two months, together with uh, my colleagues from work from Swiss, we are working on the integration with API Platform. And this is why I came here tonight to talk to you a little bit more about. Uh, before I go to my story, let's just spend a few seconds and talk about Silius. So uh, for all of you that know already what Silius is, it won't be any surprise, but for all of you that ne never heard of it, of it or just didn't never check it, it's a platform, uh, e-commerce platform, that we try to solve more common uh, e-commerce problems for the developers, but it's meant to be highly customizable with, uh, for developers. So the, up, the main goal for the platform is to deliver you a software that will be uh, enough to set up the store, but it will allow you to build whatever you want on the top of it. It's meant to be customized by end users and deliver the value that will not be like typical uh, store. Before I will jump to the story itself, let's just check what happened in the previous episode. For those that uh, are new to Silius, the story may be quite new, so let's just recap what we developed recently. First of all, for many years, we had an admin API in Silius. Before we even move, move, we consider a, a platform, it was like a few years, like five, six years ago. Silius uh, of the e-commerce platform has some unified approach to handling the request, mostly based on HTML uh, website. However, the same controller, thanks to Postgres, can could be also handled through the same controller to the same service. And this led us to led us to generating admin API which were meant to integrate with external systems. However, as you can see, there was like a ton of information. So on the example here, you can see that there is, this is an example of the cart where you have just relation to the uh, item that contains another variant. And all additional information is here, like the channel consideration or the translation. Things that may be um, strange for you and may be strange for the front-end developers as well. That's because we decided that we will expose uh, a lot of data. Uh, we mostly expose data just in the in other part of the main response. And it was up to receiver to decide what data should be used. So the front-end app or just the client needs to be aware which channels should be used or which translation should be used for some synchronization or just exposing to the end client. As you can see also, we try to follow some some standards, so it's pretty close to the hull with some links to connected resources. However, there was much too much data in one response. Not and also it was meant it was done this way because it wasn't that easy to override the serialization. Uh, back in the days with the chain at serializer, it was quite hard to customize the endpoint itself. So it it was close to the health specification we tried to follow some standards however it was two variables and it wasn't that easy to customize also this whole admin api was too much crude oriented uh, we're working with the crude a lot and there's they're solving some part of our day-to-day -day work and they're great for that however this is not the only approach and not the only way how we should look into software development However, back in the days when the admin API was created, all of the endpoints were treated crude, like a crude. Therefore, if you put some item to the cart, you were just creating an item there. And then it was to the consumer of the API to decide if he wants to create a new item as well. Or rather, he would just change the amount of the previous item. Therefore, if you will just create two items, there will be two exact same items where normally in the card logic, it didn't make much more sense to just merge it and just increase the quantity. But there was, it was by design crafted this way. Um, unfortunately, it was quite hard to be used. And all these issues brought us to creation of the shop API. Another approach, which was pretty restish with the implementation. So we move a little bit further from the implementation itself to make it easier to use the, uh, the endpoints. So a lot of data were simplified and easier to use to put on the website to consume by the mobile app. However, these changes made it incompatible with the admin API. 
and all the people that use admin API previously had to learn something new from the scratch. And the clients that were used for one app cannot be reused on the other one. Also, some other consideration needs to be done or people had to learn a new stuff just to work with the new API in the first place. Another problem that we had with the shop API was the lack of feature parity. Some stuff work, people expected that all of the stuff that are exposed through regular shops are available on the shop API. That pretty good assumption, unfortunately, we didn't have resources to make it this way at the first play, and it actually was haunting us from the day one. Also, it wasn't easy to determine which features are exactly there. Like there should different testing approaches actually make it hard to cover it in 100% because we were using different tools for testing both of them. Also, some tools that people were used to use with the default implementation, admin API or the regular shop, were not useful in shop API. And that were some of the pitfalls of the usage. However, shop API came also with the new architecture, with the common query separation, with the, this kind of exposing to of, or consuming of the customer behavior. And it also played pretty well. From here, it's also important to know Note that admin API works perfectly for the purpose that was designed to be synchronized with some external system where this amount of data is not that big issue and actually all of this transition can be consumed at once. And Shop API actually also made some bright sides. However, both the systems I told you already had some downfalls. And this brought us to consideration that we should improve both implementation. So from now we decided that in the current years, uh, it's more important to move into the direction that is closer to Symfony, and that's why we moved to the app platform, and we wanted to integrate Tilius with app platform. What, we, what do we want to achieve with that? It's for sure being closer to API standards, so being moving back from the road that we went with ship IPI. Uh, Following the standards was always our main goal in the implementation of the shop, uh, in, with the implementation of the code. So it was also important for us to follow PSR since for the best practice service and for the recommendations. However, we slightly moved from this direction of the shop API and it wasn't the best decision uh, after all. You, following the standards allows you to use of, for the usage of the libraries that are widely available especially if we are talking about the pro protocol that should be should be understandable through the application that are not written in the same language. So even if it's only PHP and JavaScript, setting up some contract, and especially the standard that we will be following, make it easier to write some connectors between two systems. What is more at the platform right now makes it makes us closer to the Symphony ecosystem. For many years, years Postgres Bundle was the main tool to create REST APIs. However, API Platform right now provides much better tooling and much easier to use. It's supported directly from the, uh, from the people from the Symphony core team and uses the same library in the much bigger extent that it was, it was used for JMS Realizer or Postgres Bundle. So, Integrating with the API platform is also important for us to be closer to the Symfony ecosystem itself. What is more, we want to achieve the unification of the API usage. Previously, Shop API and Admin API had two totally different endpoints, like the structures, the contracts were just slightly different, and these are the plans, as I told you previously, weren't compatible with, it, with themselves. And it's also quite annoying because there are like two different applications that need to be handled from, from now on. So you, unification of this API uh, will be something important for us. What is more, unification of API will help us will help people to gather the how it works from the day one. It, you will not have to learn both structures in the same time. Another thing that is pretty neat about API platform is that your it's generating API doc documentation from the code. So from now on, we will not need to be worried about the documentation because the documentation will just expose and will configure there 
through IPA platform. It also make, will make it easier to consume Celsius API and also make it easier for developers to use it. However, to reach this point, let's see what are the main challenges from the Celsius perspective that we will need to face or that we faced already and had some answers. So first of all, the problems will be split into two categories. First one will be pretty short because it's not a problem that everyone is facing. It's the framework problem because the Cilius is shipped with a lot of entities that you can work with. So for sure you need an order entity or product to work with and it needs to be easily um, overridden by you so you can be able to easily add some fields or some data to it. Um, even if we provide a lot of um, possibilities to extend it, one of them is just to make an inheritance, just extend the data. And this should be also possible with this API platform exposure. Luckily, as we were following all the simple standards from day one, and IP platform is doing the same, we are able to leverage the power of the simple ecosystem, the power of the doctrine. And without too many problems, we can consume the same entities even if both systems are playing around them or with their structures a little bit. So it appears that API Platform and Cilius were, were pretty neat and without any problem when you're extending the entities. And same should be true for the serialization. However, this is also the field that we still need to make some research and development to ensure that developer experience is really nice here. The second part of the problems are project-related problems. And this may be more interesting for all of you that are using API platform into day-to-day -day work. For just before I will jump to some ex examples or problems that we solve, it's important to also mention that by default, we're choosing the standard for the realization of API was important for us, as I told you previously, and we choose to follow the REST standard and JSON LD by default. This is the default configuration of API platform, which was also one of the reasons what is more REST is the solution that was developed for many years already, has some really neat tools uh, like also Mercure or Vulkan. And also there is like a lot of standardization and a lot of uh, support from the whole ecosystem. Uh, while GraphQL is also tempting, right now it's much less mature solution. There are still problems with caching and so on. So we thought that it would be better to choose REST and JSON LD for the start, separate out of the box. And if one will try to use it in different way for IPA platform, he will be able to do it. It will just not be supported uh, by the core by, uh, by default. First time of problem that we encounter were user columns. So I, as I told you previously, the CRUD operation were pretty, uh, pretty easily handled with the admin API. This is also true for admin API. Uh, for API platform, where it's not a problem to expose typical root operations, even customization of the typical root operation. So when you're updating data and you want to do some side effects, it's not a big deal. However, some kinds of the operation have some different structure and some different behavior. All of these types of problems are state machine transition. If you ever used Symfony workflow, finite state machine, or Windows 10 machine, you may be aware that the concept of the transition is more important there than the end result. However, the crude operation usually has the state field, then you are setting it to some particular value, like you have something new or like order is new or placed, and you're just changing the state with crude operation. With state machine and workflow, it's not the case anymore. From now on, you are talking more about the transitions, about intentions what do you want to do with particular items, which will not be e which is not easily translate translatable for the regular crude operation. So, as an example, when you have in Celsius a shipment, when you place an order, you have particular shipment that is ready to be shipped, so it's in the new state. Then, when you are clicking the button or just making some API call with the intention that you want to ship it, it will change to the it will change the state to the ship. But it's more than just changing the one field on the database. Through this transition, some additional operation may happen and they're just callbacks on the state machine itself. 
So it's important to be sure and precise what kind of translate transition on which graph you want to execute in particular moment, because each of them can have different side effects. That's why we are not able to directly just set state to shift through API platform, and we need something else. From now on, we move to some something more like uh, RPC calls. So we add a verb at the end of the path with the patch method, patch HTTP method, we are triggering some additional logic. And right now, if you will just make this patch with ID uh, of the proper shipment, you will just ship the content. The problem is even bigger when you are considering that in Sirius it is possible to make a state machine transition together with changes to some fields on the object itself. So you, here we are not only changing the state of the shipment, but we are also setting up the tracking code. And you can also, if you just like customize the uh, object itself, you're able to expose the whole object with the one state machine transition. That's why it's a little bit tricky to do it with the typical data. We are considering to switching to put the transition itself into the body of the request, or more like a command operation with some additional words at the end. We will not have a ship as a verb at the end of the path that you will be trigger, but like something more like ship command or ship transition, and then making a post request. So making a request. So this is something that we are doing a research right now. If you have any consideration about that, or if you have your own experience, feel free to catch up on our Slack or discuss it with us on the issues on the main repository, because we would like to be as close as possible to the rest paradigm where it shouldn't be done like this, but still we're looking for the best. Another problem that we need to solve is customer intention. Once again, we are moving to the problem of the crude and non crude operation. And customer behavior over the card in the shop is much better exposed with different approaches than regular crude. When you're going to the shop, of course, we can say that you're creating a card, you're updating a card with particular items. But it's much easier to express the customer behavior when you'll be talking about his behavior. So we are picking up the card, we are putting some items to the card. Then we are processing with the checkout. So we are going through the addressing step selecting shipment, selecting payment, rather than just updating the same object, even if it's true behind the hood. So this is something that we learned from Shop API already, that CQRS pattern is playing really neat in this area. So it also gives you some additional benefit, like you have only one type of the command that you can dispatch through the system, and there will be always one handler, one place in your application that will consume it, and it will always be consumed the same way. So from now on, it will not matter if you are just using API platform, common lane tool, or whatever. The interpretation of your command or customer behavior will always be the same. Thanks to our API platform, we have direct integration with Symfony Messenger. So it's as easy as putting one flag into the API resource, uh, and then it will just directly dispatch to the Symfony Messenger. CTO looks like this one, and this is directly taken from the code. If you want to register a shop user in the, sh in the shop in the Celius, you just need to provide a few fields like first name, last name, email, password, and the phone number, where the phone number is uh, not needed. And then it's just dispatched to the bus. And the configuration looks like this. There are like a few fields that you may right now reading on. The only important one from the CQRS and Messenger pattern are these two lines. So it's enough to say that Messenger is true and we don't want any output and it will be consumed through the uh, command bus. There's some additional configuration that if you're working with the API platform more, you are more familiar with probably. However, it's still the same problem as with the state machine transition when we have more like verbs in that names of the path, so we are not using only HTTP verbs, but we are extending with some of our custom logic. And this is another way, another place where we are still making some shortcuts from the rest, restful paradigm. I want to be as close as possible, so probably we'll be doing something to come closer to the 
uh, standard itself. However, we're still doing the research of either the command or some structure in the body will be better to expose actions like this. Another issue that we are trying to solve with, uh, that we are facing right now, is one endpoint for admin and the customers. For many years, we have this direct distinction that some part of API is for admin, some part of, for, of API is for users. However, and also both of the APIs were had different structures and different bodies, as I told you previously. When, as we want to unify the usage of both of them, we wanted to also have one endpoint that can be consumed by administrators and the consumers of admin API. Some problems arise, and let's try the problems with authorization. Also, just for the sake of the clarity, uh, I want to share with you that right now we are using JWC token for uh, authorization of the customers because it was uh, the easiest solution for now and it was enough for us. But let's also uh, look what was not that good with our current implementation. So if you will dig into Celia's structure, you would know that admin and shop users are two totally different entities. They're store stored in two different tables in the database. Therefore, either we need two different user providers in the security, or one provider that will look into two different repositories. But it means that what will, what should be the order of the repositories? Where should we look first? Especially if you are able to create an admin user and a shop user with the same email. This ends us with uh, just two different tasks that you, it will allow you to log in separately for the admin. So here if you, you have some super simple endpoint with email and a password. And if you will just trigger this call, uh, this, uh, call you will receive a token. Uh, if you put the prefix zero and space and then token that will receive from this endpoint, you are able to consume the API as an admin user. Here's just a simple sample configuration. So as you can see, we are putting some kind of firewall directly to the path that is available there and the custom provider with admin user. The rest of the configuration is not that important right now. And there is also a shop user uh, endpoint that will allow you to do exactly the same, but from the shop, shop user perspective. This allows us to specifically call that we want to use shop user provider in this particular endpoint, and we want to only authorize or just produce JWT tokens for the shop users. Nevertheless, even if we did the authorization endpoint, there's still problem that the rest of API needs some provider as well. And because the provider needs to be chained, or be, the provider can be only one, and it can be chained, this is what we choose right now. So if you will call right now our API, uh, you have specific endpoints for the shop and admin user. However, you can consume the same path uh, despite which authorization you choose. Still, there is an edge case, the one that we still do not solve. So what will happen if you have account as an administrator and the shop user? Even if you log as an administrator and you will try to access the regular shop, there will be a problem because the chain provider will use a shop user provider, so the one from the shop, and you will give the shop user as the first one. So we choose this order just to be sure that no that data leak will be there. However, it's still annoying because we are not covering the same behavior as it's possible with the default series implementation. And therefore, we're looking for the better solution. Perhaps off with the scopes will be much better solution here, because during the authorization, we can exactly say for what scope do we want to look for. And based on this data, we can look for a particular user. Another problem that we have, another problem, another challenge that we have with Silius is the channel based, context based data. So, in the previous example, what you could see that there was a like bloat response with a lot of languages located uh, for the particular item, as well as their channels, which is a really important thing in Silius because when you're a shop user, you're always accessing the web through the channel on which there are a lot of configuration that will be important for you. But first, let's look into internal standardization. So already, the, and the current state of our implementation is that for the product, we're returning you almost all of the translations that are there. 
especially from the admin perspective, but still it's not resolving our issue. If you are in the shop and the local context can determine the local for you, it will be filtered to only one local that is available. However, being inspired with a uh, locastic approach to translations and digging up a little bit further, and also thanks to the Kevin advice, we are looking for JSON LD internal civilization support. So the internal civilization that supports it out of this uh, out of the box with the JSON LD standard, which will allow you to directly put data that are translated to the main object and then in the context expose what this which fields are translated into particular local. It also has some additional benefits that you can, for example, expose more data for these uh, lockers and so on. If you are curious about it and want to read more, uh, today there was published a longer uh, research about this standard on our GitHub. So feel free to join us there or discuss how you like it or if you have any consideration about this one. Second problem is channel-based data. So as I told you, one of one problem is localization when we need to just provide you proper uh, proper locate proper keys for a particular locate however a lot of data is also channel based and for example it's not the front end uh, consideration which channel which price should be exposed on the product however each product can have different prices for each channel and it should also be handled on the back end side so as the channel is the main main concept for the series we need to know as soon as possible on the backend, and then serialize data based on this information. Therefore, it's true for the channel, it's true for the local, and also for the currencies. We're enhancing the serializer context with additional data like the channel, which allows us to determine or to specify more precisely what data should be exposed. So from now on, the product data can be aware of the channel. We can choose particular price. We can select only which products are visible for each channel because this is another problem that each user if they will be using different channels they will have access to different products and different categories um, or just different menu and this channel context builder will help us to expose behavior closer to the main series implementation and moving forward, another problem, many problems with you have we are integrating a new infrastructure and new uh, layer of integration of interaction with the customer is the feature parity. When you're doing something like that, you're you can express that okay, it's super easy to start, but where do you actually finish your work? We would prefer, at least we are we would prefer to expose as much as we can from the current behavior through API, but how to test it properly? Previously, we had the problem that one kind of tests were with VHEP and second one was the PHP unit. And then there was some feature drift between them because some some actions were available from API while there was available from the admin panel and other way around. And also they required some different data. That's why we decided that for the feature priority, we will use our BHEP and BTT suits. For those of you that wasn't aware of this uh, terms will be the behavior driven development and behead is a tool that allows for through BDD in PHP. Uh, we are using this tools extensively, so there are like thousands of scenarios that cover our main code base. And we want to cover the same scenarios with just API approach. So for example, here is one of the scenarios that are just taken from the Sylvia repository. One important thing here is that there are no uh, implementation details in the story itself. So for many years, this story was only considered to be taken into account from the UI perspective. But right now we added also an API tag here. So right now this story will be interpreted twice. In both examples, we'll have the same background. So the same stuff needs to happen to the story to make it available for the customers to integrate or to consumers to interact with application. Then with the UI puppet, with the UI tag, we'll consider just regular website and clicking on it and check if our behavior is correct, if we are fulfilling our expectations. Just by clicking on the website and just making the operation there, like choosing the proper buttons and so on. 
then we'll do exactly the same behavior. So we'll try to use this, we'll set up the same structure. So we'll fill database with the same data. But from now on, we'll try to make an API called build a request and call it just once, just from the different perspectives. So the same scenario and the same business, the business opportunity, the same acceptance criteria, the same behavior is expected in the both contexts, just there is a different way of interacting with it. Right now we are we have covered 25% of all admin features and 15% of all features. So for the last month or two, we were able to cover like about 15% of uh, all of our features, but there was a few considerations that we had and also it's not the only thing that we are doing at this right now, but we are get, getting the speed. As you can see the numbers, the one question that drives is still use IP first, and of course it's not. We are still much more oriented to HTML that, uh, but we are going there. Will Silius be an API first solution? And this is another tricky question. It's one of the tempting solutions. However, for now, we want to move to the direction that API and traditional websites are both first class citizens. That's why this feature parity is so important for us. So we can track which features are available where, and we'll try to minimize the gap between two interaction points. And going further with this approach, we can consider if Silius will be an application first. Uh, the couple from the infrastructure, the couple from the way how you can interact, and it will always behave the same way despite how you will interact with it. So maybe it will be voice in interface, as Antonia mentioned in the previous presentation, maybe with some message queue, maybe with API platform or HTML based website. We are also considering going the solution direction that all of this will still end up with the same behavior with the same structure at the end. So closing slowly, I would like to tell you that right now all the stuff that I described is available on the internet so you can browse uh, a, how to generate it, IPA docs through IPA platform, uh, particular on this address. So you can check how much how many endpoints are there, how you uh, how easy it is to use them, what are the pitfalls of it, and so on. To so help us with testing it, uh, help us with uh, spotting what we can improve. Another another thing that I would like to say at the end is that uh, we need you. So uh, if you have any knowledge about the IP platform, if you have any consideration about the API in e-commerce itself, or would you like to help us create the really models and future-proof API, or just want to be part of the community that uh, will bring a new standard or new quality in the e-commerce world, uh, join us. There's like the already already uh, and or the issue that is created to gather some endpoints that are not that hard from API platform point to consider. Uh, we are also throwing our help with Behead if you will need it. So just help us to start and we'll try to help you with the testing it. Um, or also if you would like to take a part into higher level consideration, catch us, catch us on the Slack or just uh, write with us on the issues itself. And that will be all from my side. Thank you very much. And let's see if there are any questions. Yes, can you hear me? Hello, Sophie. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so we have a few questions. Um, do you plan to retire the API generated right now by Resource Bundle? Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> do you plan to retire the API generated right now by Resource Bundle? Okay. Uh, do we want to retire IP generated with the uh, Resource Bundle? Uh, for now, both of the implementation are still available to use. Uh, we wanted to make sure to be clear that we are working on the new approach. However, some people may still be using it. And there are some websites that 
are using these two approaches already. Through our PC policy, we are not dumping it, so we will provide some support for it. And then we try, we'll try to provide some migration path to the new approach. And before 2.0, we are not exactly, uh, we, are, we cannot retire admin API uh, because of the liquid compatibility promise. And shop API will be probably uh, maintained for the step for the some time uh, as well, especially that there are some bigger websites. However, we would like to provide a migration path so to move to the new approach uh, as many users as possible. Okay, is there any other questions? Um, there is another one. Why new API and not V2 API? Why no semantic versioning for the API as well? Um, the new API was uh, just the consideration at the beginning uh, because we wanted to be sure, be clear what we're doing right now. Uh, the topic about V2 or new API is still open. It's new API is something that we probably would not like to stick with us for many years. Uh, so it's the question is why new API not V2? And the answer is because it's not decided yet. And it will still uh, will have a consideration about it. Probably you can also write some issue uh, or catch us or catch with us. Uh, I can say that uh, V2 is like tempting options and something that we'll consider and perhaps be integrated in the main code. Okay. So we don't see any more questions. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you everyone thank you for, for the opportunity. Uh, for some time, I may be available on the, the chat or just on the, the Silius or Simple Slack if you have any more questions.